Good morning, everyone. I am John Doug Hayes, Deputy Pike County Judge Executive and a member of the Kentucky and Pike County Bar for the past 42 years. It is my high honor this morning. It, it is a privilege uh, to serve as uh, your Master of Ceremonies for this dedication ceremony and to welcome you to this beautiful uh, new Pike County Judicial Center. This is a building that is a great uh, source of pride uh, for those of us here in Pike County, but not only those of us in Pike County, for all citizens of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And we thank each and every one of you for being here this morning and for joining, joining us in this uh, celebration uh, of this uh, dedication of this uh, building. Uh, we appreciate all the media outlets that uh, are covering this uh, important event. Uh, to begin this morning, I want to call upon my good friend and a uh, district judge uh, here in Pike County, the Honorable Kelsey E. Friend, uh, to deliver our invocation. Judge Friend has been on the bench since uh, the year of 2000. Prior to his service as district judge, uh, Judge Friend also served in the Kentucky House of Representatives. District Court Judge Kelsey E. Friend, Jr. It is a privilege to serve as a judge in a county where we still give invocations and where we still lift up the name of the Lord because you see, judges were created some 1,450 years before the birth of Christ. We're told about it in Exodus 18 when Moses' father-in-law comes to him and says, look, you're way overworked. You just got too much on you. You can't judge all these millions of people. And so Moses then follows the counsel of his father and appoints judges. But what I'd like to share with you is the criterion that are given that is given in verse 20 through verses 23, where it is written, And thou shalt teach them the ordinances and laws, and shall show them the way wherein they must walk, and this work that, that, that they must do. However, they shall provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place over such them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, and rulers of fifty, and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons, and it shall be that ever great matter that they shall bring unto thee, but ever small matter they shall judge, so it shall be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. If thou shalt do this thing, and the God commandeth thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all this people shall also go to their place in peace. Will you bow with me in a moment of prayer? The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky displays what his precious hands have made. The earth and everything contained therein is a testimony to God's creation. For all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. One day tells a story to the next, and one night shares knowledge with the next. We have only to open our eyes to see all that you have given us, which shows that you are a loving God, and today we humbly bow our heads give you thanks. Today we give you special thanks for this judicial center and moreover we thank you for creating judges who were called by your people to serve and interpret the laws of this land that justice may be given. Today I pray for myself and all the judges that now serve and will continue to serve in this judicial center that we may fairly and impartially serve every man and woman who may come before us both fairly and impartially, giving no concern for race, creed, or color. 
May we always look to you for guidance so that our country, our state, and our nation may remain one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now may you continue to bless us and protect us. May you continue to smile upon us and be gracious unto us. May you continue to show us favor and give us peace. For it is in the precious name of Jesus Christ that we ask all things. Amen. This time we will please stand uh, for reciting the Pledge of Allegiance, and I want to welcome the Honorable Leo Murphy, District 3 Magistrate of the Pike County Fiscal Court, uh, and has been uh, such since 2003. Uh, Magistrate Murphy is a distinguished veteran of the United States Army. Magistrate Leo Murphy. Everybody join with me, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Master Murphy. At this time, we'll have the singing of our national anthem by Lindsay Thacker. Uh, Lindsay is a deputy PAC circuit clerk uh, Lindsay Thacker. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Real talent in the uh, Pike Circuit Court Clerk's Office, Lindsay Thacker. Thank you. Now at this time, I, I want to do something. It's going to take a little while to get this done, but it's an important part of this ceremony. Uh, we have uh, several very special guests with us today, uh, many of whom do not have a speaking role uh, in this morning's ceremony but all of whom have played uh, vitally important roles uh, uh, in the design, construction, and implementation of the Pike County uh, Judicial Center. The building we dedicate here today simply would not have been uh, possible without the effort of these people. So please bear with me, and as I call your names, uh, I would just ask that you stand, uh, briefly be recognized, and then uh, uh, return to your seat, uh, and if you would, withhold your applause to the end as we let each person stand and be briefly acknowledged. Again, these are, these are the folks who, who are here that we want to recognize, 
that do not have speaking roles in this morning's ceremony. The others we're not uh, forgetting about. We'll introduce them as their time comes uh, to speak. So at this time, I'd like to introduce the members of the Pike County Physical Court. Um, the Magistrate Jeff Anderson, uh, uh, Magistrate Vernon Chick Johnson, uh, Magistrate Kenneth Robinson, Magistrate Hillman Dotson, and Magistrate Chris Harris. The following are members of the Pike County Judicial Center Project Development Board. Uh, Pike Circuit Court Clerk, uh, Anna Penson Spears. Uh, former Pike Circuit Court Clerk, David Deskins. Uh, Pikeville Attorney, Neil Smith. Uh, who also was the Kentucky Bar Association representative on the board. Uh, Donovan Blackburn, Pikeville City Manager. And Charles E. Lowe, Jr., who was the citizen at large on this board. Um, the following are personnel from the Administrative Office of the Courts, who are special guests here today. AOC, Administrative Office of the Courts Director, Lori K. Dudgeon. Did I get that right? Good. <laughs> All right. Uh, Manager Vance Mitchell with the AOC Division of Capital Construction. What a great job he did. Project Coordinator Brad Smith. AOC Division of Capital Construction, also did a great job, enjoyed working with him. Uh, former Governor Paul E. Patton, Chancellor of the uh, University of Pikeville, and I believe he had a prior commitment, but uh, certainly we wanted to recognize uh, Governor Patton. Uh, state Legislators, Senator Ray S. Jones II. Uh, state Representative Hubert Collins. State Representative Leslie Combs, and finally, State Representative W. Keith Hall. On the uh, project completion team, uh, Sherman Carter Bernhardt of Lexington, architect. And you can see what a great job he did, and on the outside of the building, thank you. Uh, Codell Construction of Winchester, construction manager. Uh, Ross Sinclair and Associates, uh, financial agent. The following are judicial officers. I hope I haven't left any out, uh, especially if I, if I have to appear in their court. Uh, that's the danger of these recognitions, folks, uh, leaving someone out and hurting someone's feelings, uh, and rightfully so. The following judicial officers are present, Supreme a Court of Kentucky Justice, Will T. Scott. Supreme Court of Kentucky Justice, Michelle Keller. A Kentucky Court of Appeals Judge, Sarah Walter Combs. Kentucky Court of Appeals Judge, Janet L. Stumbo. Pike Circuit uh, Court Judge, Stephen D. Combs. Pike Family Circuit Court Judge, Larry E. Thompson. Uh, Floyd Circuit Court Judge, John David Cottle. And U.S. Magistrate, United States Magistrate Judge, and uh, formerly a, a practicing attorney here in Pikeville, Edward Adkins. Other uh, county officials and guests present here today uh, Pike County uh, Commonwealth's Attorney, uh, Rick Bartley. Pike County Attorney, Howard Keith Hall. Assistant Pike County Attorney, uh, and the attorney who represents the uh, physical court, Pike County Physical Court, uh, Roland Case. Uh, Pikeville City Attorney, Rusty Davis. 
Uh, Pike County uh, Clerk, Liam Pearl Elliott. Uh, Pike County Sheriff, Charles Fuzzy Kazee. Pike County PBA, Lonnie Osborne. Pike County Coroner, Russell Roberts. Pike County Jailer, um, <coughs> excuse me, Rodney Scott. And from our neighboring uh, county of Floyd County, uh, we welcome Floyd County Attorney Keith Bartley. Hi, Keith. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just told by my good friend Will T. Scott, who's kept me straight for many a year, particularly when we're grouse hunting and other hunting, uh, that we have Floyd uh, 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 Circuit Judge. Oh, Johnny Ray Harris, I'm sorry, uh, Johnny Ray, Judge Harris, I'm sorry. Welcome. <laughs> All right, I hope that I got everyone. If, if I would like to recognize everybody in this room because you're all important, and uh, uh, particularly the taxpayers of, of Kentucky, and we're all that, I assume, uh, who have made this wonderful building possible. So we, we are honored and uh, blessed with your presence here with us today. And uh, with that, we'll move along now. We have a few brief remarks. Uh, first, we'll hear from the uh, uh, Pike County Bar Association president, Melanie Horton. Uh, she will deliver the remarks on behalf of the Pike County Bar, many members of which, uh, including me, are present uh, here in this room. Uh, Melanie has been a member of the Pike County Bar since 2001, and she is also the Pike County Master Commissioner Melanie Horton. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, honorable judges, distinguished guests. I'm honored to be speaking here today on behalf of the Pike County Bar Association on such a joyous occasion. And as we sit here today at the dedication of this courthouse, I am reminiscent of all those men and women who came before us to help establish our justice system. In preparing for this speech, it came to my attention that four weeks from today will mark the 150th anniversary of one of the most well-known and widely respected dedication speeches ever delivered. It was given by a humble Kentucky lawyer who found needed words in a tumultuous time. His message was clear and concise and delivered with the conviction of a leader who had the vision to see a day like today. As Abraham Lincoln stood before a tattered Gettysburg crowd and dedicated that solemn battlefield, he had a very simple and profound request that those who gave their lives to ensure that this great nation shall not have died in vain and that his nation of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish. This building and this courtroom are a testament to our perseverance as a nation and to our devotion to the liberty, justice, and equality that Abraham Lincoln sought some 150 years ago. But more than that, this courthouse is a promise to the future generations that we, the members of the Pike County Bar Association and this honorable court, intend to preserve the lessons of the past while striving to perfect the application of liberty, justice, and equality for each and every person who comes before this honorable court in the Pike County Judicial Center. Thank you. This time I want to call upon the Chief District uh, Court Judge here in Pike County, Darrell H. Mullins. Uh, uh, Judge Mullins, uh, has been on the bench since 1996. Uh, he's been a member of the Pike County Bar since 1989 and previously served as an assistant Commonwealth's attorney uh, prior to his judicial service. Judge Mullins was also a member of the uh, Pike County Judicial Center Project Development Board and a hardworking one on that board, Chief District Judge Darrell H. Mullins. Thank you, John Doug. It's, it's a privilege to be here today, and my remarks are going to be very brief. Uh, first thing I want to say is I'm not going to sing around Lindsay anymore. Uh, Lindsay is my clerk in, uh, in the 
when we do the criminal cases, and uh, I always tell her she's my left arm because she's left-handed, and so am I. Excellent job, Lindsay. Uh, I did serve on this committee. Uh, it's been about three or four years in the making, and it is absolutely the best committee that we could have ever put together. All of these people serving on this committee deserve uh, credit for the job that they did. Uh, and, and through the years when we were going over the plans and everything, the first thing that we had to do was to pick the architect. And I think we picked the best firm that we could possibly have picked because uh, they really gave us a showplace, a masterpiece, something that's going to be around for generations to come. Out of all the votes that we took on this committee, there was only one dissenting vote, and then after a little bit of discussion, that dissenting vote changed their vote to yes. So I don't know many committees that, that have been able to do that. Uh, it, it's a building that will last, as I said, for generations. I've always thought that we should live our life and leave something behind so that people in later generations will know that we've been here. I think all the people that worked on this, county government, city government, the committee, all the people who serve in this building, the clerks, the lawyers, the judges, and uh, the people that come into it, we serve them, and we will be serving them for generations to come. It has been an honor and a privilege to be a part of it. Thank you. And thank you, Judge uh, Mullins. At this time, uh, I'd like to call upon the vice uh, chief regional circuit judge, uh, Eddie Coleman. Uh, he is also the chief Pike circuit judge. Judge Coleman uh, was a member of uh, the uh, Pike County Judicial Center Project Development Board also. Uh, he assumed the bench in uh, 1995. Vice chief regional circuit judge, Eddie Coleman. Pretty fortunate today, we've got three justices of the Supreme Court with us. Justice Minton, and Justice Scott, and my friend Justice Keller. We've got all these judges from our Court of Appeals and Circuit and District Courts, and state and local officials, and one federal master judge, and all of you who are present. And we're happy to see all of you out today. It's a great honor for me to be a circuit judge as part of the highest honor I've had other than being married to Francis, and uh, I'm humbled to be up here with these honored guests, you know, and as all public projects are, they're a product of many people, and no one person can take credit for any particular aspect of a building, uh, and this building has many good aspects that someone would want to take credit for. Our primary goal was to make the clerk's office and other services that the court justice offers to be convenient to the public. You know, like if you come get a driver's license, you walk in the front door. If you serve on a jury, there's a jury assembly room, and it's on the first floor, a place for you to be comfortable and away from witnesses and, and jurors, I mean, away from witnesses and litigants and attorneys. There's security for those who work here and for those who come here. And there's technology. And all that's well and good. And there's strength for the last 100 years. And strength, these architects and engineers tell us to withstand a 6.5 rector earthquake without much damage to the building. It's a strong building. But finally, this is a large building. And it has high ceilings. And it's a beautiful public areas. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a grand building. Some say it might be too grand. Some people might say that the Commonwealth shouldn't be spending money on judicial centers like this one. But I tell you that how you spend your money shows where your heart is. It's the object of your concern. It's you don't spend money on something unless you're serious about it. As Jesus said, for where you, your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And I look to the beginning of my career 
to see where my heart is and where our hearts should be. It's a tradition in, for every circuit judge in Pike County to take an oath of office that was once required by law but has not been required by law for decades now. And we take this traditional oath because it says something about what should be in our heart as circuit judges. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will administer justice without respect to persons, to do equal right to the poor and to the rich, and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge all duties incumbent upon me as a judge according to the best of my abilities. I'm proud of this building because it represents the heart of what's best in this commonwealth and in this county. It demonstrates to the world that we seek to have a heart to administer justice without respect to persons, regardless of their gender or their race or their religion, and that we have a heart to do equal right to the poor and to the rich, and that whether they have great power or no power. I took that oath of office for the first time in April 1995, and I told the folks gathered there that when I was a young boy, my father could have benefited from the court system, from the service of attorneys, but he delayed, he held back, he, because he feared he would not be heard, that the law would not treat him fairly, and that he would not be treated with respect. So today, let's dedicate this building to the purpose that those who come here leave knowing that they've been heard, they've been treated fairly, and they've been treated with respect. May God bless this building and all of you. Thank you very much. Next speaker for brief remarks will be uh, the fellow that I work for, uh, the Honorable Wayne T. Rutherford, Pike County Judge Executive. Uh, judge Rutherford was first elected uh, county judge in 1969. Uh, during his first two terms in office, Judge Rutherford served under uh, the uh, previous Kentucky judicial system, that is, before the constitutional amendment, uh, and he presided, therefore, over many local uh, judicial matters uh, in the uh, county court system. Uh, those matters today, of course, are handled by the district court judges in Kentucky. Judge Rutherford served as Pike County's first judge executive beginning in his third term uh, in office, effective 1978. Judge Rutherford has been elected county judge six times with his present service uh, beginning in 2007. He is the longest serving county judge in Pike County's history. Uh, judge Rutherford served as chairman of the Pike County Judicial Center Project Development Board. Pike County Judge Executive Wayne T. Rutherford. Thank you, Judge Hayes, an honored guest, and uh, used to say platform guest, but all of us here today and all of you are honored guests for this occasion. Uh, I want to start back and give a little bit of a history of, uh, of the Justice Building that's been occupied for 25 years. In 2007, when we assumed office and they had just held a dedication of the new jail where they had built on the front of the new jail uh, a large number of beds. About two weeks later, Judge Hayes and I visited the, the Justice Building. And folks, what we found was deplorable. How our, how our court system was operating, the way they was operating, with the, with the condition of that building was just <coughs> Just unbelievable. I remember I served on the jury in Judge Coleman's court and looked over and a leak coming down from the roof to the basement. That was poorly designed building, poorly constructed building, and it was, it was just unbelievable what the Commonwealth of Kentucky had spent since that time on the heating and cooling system and on that building. But it, it was, so I came back to the office after we was over to the Justice Building that day and I called Frankfurt. 
And I said, folks, I've just made uh, by statutory requirements to, to, to look at the jail building, and I went to the justice building in the same building, and we have got to have something done. And I said, I, I need to know. I knew the legislature had passed an act uh, where they would bond the buildings uh, in Kentucky, the judicial buildings. And I said, I, I need to know where we're at on the list. I need to know under this act that the legislature passed if those people in charge has us listed on that list for a new judicial building. Later they came back and said, You're, I think it was 17, and said, look like we're going to probably only fund 11. I then got with Senator Jones and Justice Will T. Scott. They too knew the plight of this building and what this court system was having to operate under. And they went to work. They went to the previous Chief Justice. And we had a good argument, uh, Charles Barrett. We had, a, we had the third largest court system in the Commonwealth as for cases. We had it with Jefferson County Fayette and then Pike, if I remember. So we had a good argument that why this building ought to be constructed in for Eastern Kentucky. And yet, we, we was not going to get the new building under that act. Thank God that we was moved down to number 11, if I remember. And that was the last one that was scheduled to be funded. So we moved from there to put a board together. They gave me a list of the board of which statutorily I was chairman and the other positions. And I noticed that they didn't have a citizen member on it. So I, I, I also noticed they didn't have a city member on it of the city of Pikeville. So then uh, Frankfurt again and said, folks, you're going to block the city off. We're going to block the city of Pikeville off as you build this building, take three to four years to build. And yet you've got nobody from the city on it. Please put the mayor on it. They said we don't have any board for a city representative on it or a citizen member. And I said we need that input on this board with us. They, they gave us those two <coughs> members. And what Donovan Blackburn, who represented the city, what the city input in this as they blocked off this town and the city input. Folks, if we, if, if, if they, if Frankfurt had not give us that person on this board, you would not have had the street in the heart of Pikeville that's opened up, opened up to, to the court, county courthouse. We would not have had that street. What the city has done and their, their input in their city attorney, working with our county attorney's office in Roland Case, to get through this, to get through this, then if, if we had not had them, the citizens member gave us an opportunity to appoint somebody who had gone through in the justice building and had to put up with what he had to put up with over there, former judge Charles Lowe, Jr. And what he's contributed to this board. Many times he stood up and said, whoa, 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 whoa. You all have got to remember that this building belongs to the taxpayers as, you, as we make these decisions. They belong to the people this building does. Many times I remember during this period of time that Judge Lowe cautioned us to please remember who this building belonged to. Then we had location, location, location. We hear that all the time in economic development. Yes, we had a location, the majority of the board wanted over on the river field. But no, Frankfurt said, no, can't do it on the river field because you have subsurface problems over there with your existing building and the old First National Bank building. And we understood that. We didn't want to go 
to Main Street. The reason we didn't is because the oldest building in the city of Pikeville, the what is known as the Christman Building or the old Howe Drugstore, the oldest building. The oldest building also built at the same time, constructed by John Yost's father, was the Cottle Building that the Combs family owned. We didn't want to tear that down. We didn't want to take the Pinson Hotel. We didn't want to remove that from the city. We didn't want to do that. Then we had the Weddington Theater, a theater that many of you went to as children, that I went to when I was growing up. The old Weddington Theater gave us an insight to the world. That between movies, they told you what was going on, if you all remember, around the world. It's the only news we got, folks, back then. But then we we talked about the location, and finally Frankfurt, uh, Marchett Harris finally said, you either build it on Main Street or we'll take that $34 million and take it to another city. Well, we certainly didn't want, want <laughs> to lose this building and to some other city. So we took a lot of flack, folks. This committee took a lot of flack. The local paper didn't help us. They, wrote, they wouldn't come to the meetings and they'd write news articles and wrote editorials against this building, this very building, We'd go over and meet with the publisher and we'd meet with the editor and he called it a courthouse. What he did to us in our office, uh, Hillman, was we started getting the calls. Oh, you're going to tear that beautiful historic courthouse down. No, we're not. We're building a judicial building. A judicial building for our, our state court system. Yes, it will be a Pike County building, but it will be leased to the state under the, under the statute that the legislature and the governor signed into law in this commonwealth. So we, we took the flack. I said then, and as I say today, this beautiful building wants the people to see it and see what, this, what has happened. As Dara Mullen said, then we had to make some decisions. Who was going to be our architect? We discussed and discussed and discussed. And as Darrell said, we made the right choice. Steve Sherman and his, his people came to us with a, we had told him, said, oh, draw us up something, let us look at it, we'll discuss it. And Steve brought it up, the first, first one, and we commended him, said, gosh, that's beautiful. But I believe, go back and to, and Today, before you leave, we want to send you. I said, Donovan Blackman can go with you. Bobby Branham can go with you. And that they can go out in town and take pictures of the city of Pikeville. And we would like for you to take these pictures back and mold this building to, to fit into the city of Pikeville as it is today. He came back to us in about three months. And folks, we couldn't believe it. The front entrance to this building is like the post office up on Main Street. Come back down the street to the historic Pike County Courthouse and you see the big windows in the front of this building. On top of it is like on the top of the federal building. He extended out on the sides as you see it out here today. And and what a, what a job that, that he did. And I know that I visited many courthouses, judicial buildings in the Commonwealth. Judge Coleman, I'd go to him and they'd say, Judge Coleman's already been here, several of them, traveling around to try to see. My wife, Pat, here today, we made a trip to Merlin. When I went to Merlin on a trip on behalf of the Briggs Interstate Park, look at a water park. We picked up the local paper and it had, where they had a dedication of a judicial building very close to us. We called, we got the information, we called, and the lady said, well, you called judge in time, come before our body because we're having a meeting at 10 o'clock in the morning. And then we'll give you a tour of the building. 
I went into that governmental uh, body, which had commissioners and a county administrator, and they called me up to speak, and they said, this is Judge Rutherford, he's from Pike County, they mine coal down there, keeps our lights on. And those people even knew the importance of coal. But they gave us a tour of that new building, which was hooked on to their courthouse. And, uh, and, and looking at this courthouse and looking at, at that, that new facility, which was an award winning in the state of Maryland, I see nothing that this building has to take second place to, including the clerk's office. Then we said we want to have the only lead building, green building, in the Commonwealth. And we talked to our architect, our engineers, and by the way, our local engineers, summit engineers was used on this project. And uh, we talked to them about it. The, they, the, the Commonwealth of Kentucky and the office in Frankfurt had never, <coughs> had never had a platinum building, and that was our goal. Well, we was well on our way to meet that goal until we was doing some drilling and we hit water. And, and Donovan, as the city always does in helping on this project, they sent the biggest pump down you had in the city to uh, help them pump the water out. Folks, they run into a river under this building. I mean, it was unbelievable. Guess what happened? The Ratliff building, which was too close to the, to the Christmas building, Old Benton Town, you all all remember, started tipping over. And we had to buy the Ratliff building. That damaged the subsurface of a, of a foundation on the oldest building in town, and it started having problems. We didn't want to take the oldest building in town. Now, 2007, I told you. 2008, Wall Street fell. Uh-oh, no project. Well, I got a call and said, Judge, you need to come to Frankfurt. Because tonight, the board's meeting, and you need to get down here. We loaded up. Several of us, Judge Coleman included, Jeannie, and, and we, we went to Frankfurt. And I believe if we hadn't went to Frankfurt, we'd have had no project. But I said Wall Street failed. Wall Street hurt Pike County, hurt Kentucky, helped hurt America, and hurt the world. We know that <coughs> when our financials went out. But folks, it helped this project. What happened, the cost of materials bottomed out. And we said, why don't we buy now? Why don't we buy all my materials now while they're low? And do what they taught us in Japan. Build as needed. That's in America now. Toyota don't have any warehouses, folks. They just have their stuff shipped in. And they don't store it. They go ahead and they build. That's what happened on this project. Fuzzy, we had money then to buy th these buildings on this street, all of them. Now, we wasn't going to buy the Christman building. The Ratliff building was too close to it, so we wasn't going to buy it. We had the money then to buy all the buildings over here and remove those buildings that, and you all remember, you all remember the buildings. So we, we was able to buy them by the oldest buildings in town finally we didn't they came to us and said look we realized we got some damages and we we will agree with your appraisal the heirs to that property and we bought it all those uh, those historical places I've mentioned the oldest building in town on the corner the Cottle building Pinson Hotel and Weddington in this building downstairs on the first floor, historical plaques will be installed in the lobby. And ironically, then you have the granddaughter of Blake and Ann Pinson, who comes to work every day in this building where the Pinson Hotel, and, and, that's, and that, that is great because it hurt us so bad to have to make the decision. 
While we made these decisions, we could not have done all of this and the appraisals we had without, without help. I did not have time, but Bobby Brandon from my staff to send, attended, attended every construction monthly meeting that he could get to and reported back to the board. But folks, we, ha we had to have a contractor. So we had, we, we were bringing those in who ha had made proposals to us before the board. And the, believe it or not, the first one showed up was the same one that built the Justice Building all those years ago. And I said, now, fellas, I think you're wasting your time. I don't think, I'm not speaking for everybody on this board, but I don't think we're going to do any business with you but what's happened over here at this other building that you came in here and built, they, they didn't make their presentation. They picked their stuff up and left town. But folks, we got Codell Construction Company from Winchester. And believe it or not, this project was completed on schedule and in budget. And I give credit to the AOC office in Frankfurt for part of that. I know that I called down there many times and said, I expect you up to these meetings and I expect you to challenge us to make sure that this, this building is in budget. And you all did that. You all did that and, and the many trips that you made, you know. And I'm, I'm like Darrell Mullen said, I have been on a lot of boards and commissions, chert a lot. Never have I ever served on one. Folks, we didn't miss many meetings. Maybe I missed two, I think Judge Coleman missed two, and some of them didn't miss any meetings. But this was an active board, a active board of what, what Mr. Smith brought to this board was unbelievable. What he brought of his experience and his, uh, him being attorney for years for the school board and so on was something. But uh, this 92 square feet building is a large building as, as they said. But th this magnificent and wonderful building now ranks as one of the finest public buildings in this commonwealth and, and all of us, let me tell you something. This Chief Justice here, I was, I, I, I've been in his office. I remember Justice Scott said before we went in to meet with him once, he said, I'm going to tell you about, about our Chief Justice. First, he's a good man. Second, he's as passionate about the judicial buildings, judge, as men you are. And when we go in there, he's going to listen to you. And I went into his office and I, I was never treated with more respect than I was treated by Justice Minton, Chief Justice of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And the th things that we asked for, the changes that the board asked for was done. And we moved on to build and complete this building. There will be continued to be a battle going on between the good and evil, the justice and injustice in this building. The first indicator of a threat to any county is a failed court system, and we're blessed. We're blessed because of the great bar association we have and the attorneys we have in Pikeville and in, in Kentucky. the great circuit judges that we have, the great circuit judges that we have, the understanding and knowing our people and making sure that justice is rendered. But it's the dedicated employees, the dedicated court employees. You're as important as all of these, all of the judges. My staff was when I had the court system. My staff was as important as I was as he referred to the lady who worked for him, from Judge Mullen. Everybody had to work hard to keep this in budget, and we did. Our county attorneys, our county attorney and, and city, city attorney was magnificent 
in the way that, that they represented uh, this building and the, and the construction of this building and all of the shared dreams. Nobody can take credit. But all of our shared dreams becomes reality today. And uh, I want to thank the Chief Justice of the Commonwealth for the cooperation and the AOC and all the cooperation that they give us. God bless our court system and God bless Pike County. Uh, before I forget it, uh, I told you I'd forget a couple of people who should be recognized, actually, and I, I have a dear friend. His name is uh, Reed Delano Anderson. He's a retired circuit judge, also a former assistant uh, county attorney. I had uh, Roland Case's spot, uh, uh, Keith Hall, before, uh, before Roland came along, but Reed Anderson's present. We're, we're happy to have him. I also uh, see Bayard Collier, who's a practicing attorney now here in Pikeville. He is a former uh, Pike Circuit Court uh, judge, and we're happy to have you also. And uh, Judge mentioned Jeannie in his address, and uh, I don't think that I've recognized her, and, and I certainly ought to do that. That's the uh, uh, lovely young lady sitting over to my left. Uh, uh, she is so terribly efficient, if you know Jeannie Robinson. Uh, she's chief of staff in uh, uh, Judge Rutherford's uh, office, uh, I'm supposed to be a her boss, but that's not true. She's my boss, uh, and she's probably the best organizer, uh, Justice Minton, that I've ever seen in my life, and I think the folks at AOC would agree with that. And uh, she has uh, organized this event, as she does uh, most of the special events that we have in Pine County. Jenny, I'd just like for you to stand and be recognized. And by the way, I said I was going to do that, and she told me not to, so I'm in real trouble now. But at this time, uh, we're, we're ready for our dedication address, and uh, delivering that address today is the Honorable uh, John D. Menton, Jr., Chief Justice of the Kentucky uh, Supreme Court. Uh, Chief Justice Menton was elected to the Supreme Court of Kentucky in 2006 and was sworn in as Kentucky's fifth Chief Justice in 2008. Uh, his fellow justices elected him as Chief Justice for a second term that began in uh, June uh, 2012. Uh, Chief Justice Minton was in private practice for 15 years before serving as a circuit judge from 1992 to 2003, and a Kentucky Court of Appeals judge from 2003. Uh, uh, to 2006. Chief Justice Minton is steering the judicial branch through Kentucky's worst economic downturn in decades uh, by creating efficiencies at all four levels of the court system. In 2003, the Kentucky Bar Association honored him with its Outstanding Judge Award. Uh, he was named Distinguished Jurist uh, in 2012 by the University of Kentucky College of Law Alumni Association. Later this week, he will be inducted into the Western Kentucky University Hall of Distinguished Alumni. Ladies and gentlemen, please join, me, join with me in giving a very warm welcome to Chief Justice John D. Minton, Jr. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, John Doug. Good morning, and thank you for inviting me back. I was here for the groundbreaking, and my, have you broken ground and done such a beautiful job. It's my honor to be a part of this very important occasion with you, an occasion for the dedication of the Pike County Judicial Center. I bring you greetings from my fellow justices on the court. Uh, two of whom are with us today, of course, the uh, hometown Justice uh, Scott, who is sitting beside me, and Justice Keller from Northern Kentucky. We're pleased to be a part of this ceremony today. I congratulate all of Pike County today on this very significant event in the life of this county and in the life of this commonwealth. Fifty years ago, uh, Harry Cottle, a lawyer from Whitesburg, wrote the book, Night Comes 
to the Cumberlands, a bi biography of a depressed area. The book, book brought national attention to Appalachia uh, with bleak images of the economic and environmental damage plaguing the region. In chapter 16, which is entitled From Bust to Boom Again, Cottle colorfully described the state of public facilities in Appalachia during the era following the Great Depression and World War II as being, as he said, deteriorated to a level uh, so low that they could scarcely be imagined as existing in a civilized country. That's what Cottle said. Most significant to those of us in the court system is Cottle's description of the typical county courthouse in Appalachia. And here's what he said. Crumbling, dilapidated structures, which would have been condemned as threats to public safety in any of the nation's major cities. Some leaked like sieves, and all of them were tobacco-stained and filthy. Year after year, he says, they crumbled and they moldered without even rudimentary maintenance. Their custody was vested in the elected jailers who saw little need for windows clean enough to permit the sun rays to filter through. Unfortunately, Harry Cottle's dreary description of county courthouses was not limited to Appalachia, nor was it limited to the post-World War II era uh, of the 40s and 50s or even 60s. As recently as the 90s, many of Kentucky's decaying courthouses threatened the health and safety of the employees and the public who entered the buildings each day. Among the most worthy anecdotes around the Commonwealth is a story about a courthouse that was without any operating restroom, forcing the employees and the public to use the facilities across the street at a fast food restaurant. And it has been within the last five years that we have finally closed that courthouse. More than one courthouse lacked an elevator, requiring disabled litigants, participants who were unable to climb the stairs to literally be carried up the stairs by the bailiffs. And one courthouse attic was so infested with pigeons that the ceiling collapsed under the weight of bird droppings. Now I know some of these stories may uh, not seem too far-fetched uh, to those of you, to those of us, who worked and practiced in old courthouses. Uh, and old courthouses uh, here, the old courthouse has been referenced, it was attached to the jail in 1990. I can't tell you the number of phone calls that we fielded in Frankfurt, Judge Rutherford, from Judge Coleman, describing <laughs> that famous leak that started at the roof and went all the way to the basement. <laughs> Over the years, we've had our ups and downs uh, with courthouse construction in Kentucky. And the Court of Justice has not put on blinders uh, to some of the well-deserved criticisms that we've taken over the past decade uh, as our program has progressed. But that criticism should not at all tarnish the overall benefit of this wonderful program that was initiated with the best of intentions and brought to, uh, to secure modern court facilities to counties all across the Commonwealth and today it comes here in Pike County. The court system and the citizens of the Commonwealth have benefited across the Commonwealth from the efficient administration of justice that has been accomplished with the construction of these buildings. And the counties have benefited, as Judge Rutherford mentioned, from the capital investment projects that improves the face of the city centers throughout the state and brings much needed construction dollars and jobs to the communities where these projects have happened. Now the technical functionality of this new judicial center will become a means for the Kentucky Court of Justice to provide access to justice more effectively and more efficiently, not only in Pike County today, but all across the Commonwealth as we begin to uh, build our statewide case management and electronic case filing system as we begin to create a centralized bookkeeping and collection system, as we begin to move toward a court system that is more technologically capable of serving the needs of the Commonwealth in the 21st century. 
and also to provide the highest level of court security to promote the safety of the persons who work in these buildings and the persons who come here to do the people's business. Before I conclude my remarks, it's important that I add my voice to those who've recognized the hard work of the folks here on this project development board. And Judge Rutherford has described in detail how much work they have done to make this building in this place a reality. I want to acknowledge the support, the strong support that this community has received from Senator Jones and Representative Collins and Combs and Hall for their support always in the funding the judicial branch budget that has made it possible for us to do this here and to do things like this other places across the Commonwealth. The Project Development Board uh, had its uh, ups and downs in the site selection and trying to secure this site uh, uh, for the construction of this building, but they have planned everything. You notice how tastefully done the colors are here, how beautiful the woodwork is. Something for you to be proud of, the Project Development Board had to make all of those decisions. Obviously, they had very capable help but they made those types of choices in a committee that obviously worked together with great harmony. You know, the completion of a project like this that invests this kind of money uh, in downtown Pikeville uh, does require community-wide cooperation, does require community-wide support, and I congratulate you on providing that kind of support for the fiscal court and the members of this project development board. But it wouldn't be possible without the support of all of the taxpayers of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. You know, I give these uh, dedication speeches and I always conclude drawing on the words of Winston Churchill and I will do that again. Himself a student of architecture, a student of history. And we find, as he alluded to, that the shape of the buildings we design shapes the culture that occupies these buildings. And I've already heard in comments around this building today that people behave just a little better, Judge. When they come in a building that looks like this, they feel like Judge Scott, Justice Scott, they've been to court. And we're proud of that. That's the very reason for the magnificent way that this, this building looks. And as our courts have moved from the cramped, deteriorating uh, uh, buildings that they occupied, from the inadequate courthouses into new buildings designed for efficient, cooperation, efficient court operations, the morale of the workers who work inside improves immensely, and the quality of the work that they do improves markedly. This building, which sits here in the heart of Pikeville, is more than concrete and steel and bricks and mortar, and other speakers have mentioned this as well. It is more than all of that put together and imaginatively and creatively and tastefully designed. It is more than the modern technology and security that it provides to us. This magnificent new facility symbolizes to all who pass by, who pass through the heart of Pike County, that Pike County is a place that puts high value on the power and privilege of our democratic form of government and emphasizes to the world that in Pike County the pursuit of justice, the pursuit of justice is one of the highest ideals held in high esteem by this community. I want to congratulate you on making hard choices, on making firm decisions, on investing in the future of the most important values that this community could hold. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this important day. Thank you, Justice Minton, and uh, there are so many people who, whose roles were essential in, uh, in getting this magnificent building uh, done on time and within budget, but certainly without the support and the leadership of the person at the top, and that's you, Justice Minton, we could not have done this project. Thank you again. Uh, just a, a few announcements and, and, and we're going to be ready to close. I do appreciate your patience. I, I wish we had had time to let so many others speak. Uh, uh, time uh, was a problem, however, and I appreciate uh, everyone who's been recognized and all of you in attendance uh, 
one more time, let me thank you for being here. Immediately following this ceremony, uh, the formal ribbon cutting will take place, and uh, hopefully it's not raining outside, does not appear to be. Uh, if it is, we'll do it in the main lobby, uh, just inside the front door, but if it is weather permitting, we'll do it just outside. Justice uh, Minton will, be, will do the honor of uh, cutting the ribbon, and uh, We'll have that uh, ceremony disposed of. Uh, you're all invited, of course, down to see that. I hope you will stay and attend that. After the ribbon cutting, uh, everyone is invited to take uh, a tour of the Judicial Center. If you haven't done that, uh, we have a, a group of eight uh, uh, deputy uh, circuit clerks uh, who will graciously uh, be guiding uh, uh, these tour groups uh, through this beautiful new facility. Uh, with, with all the great security in this building, you're going to need a guide. You can't just wander through this building. Uh, it is very secure. Um, and these tours will be available if you're interested, beginning in the main lobby uh, near the grand staircase, uh, a beautiful grand staircase, I might add. And uh, immediately following the ribbon cutting ceremony, uh, also everyone is uh, invited to a reception. Uh, in the jury assembly room. That's on the first floor. As you come in the front door, look at the elevators. The jury assembly room is down the hallway to your left. Uh, I'm sure you'll be able to find it because it'll have uh, uh, some food there and, uh, and you know the crowd will be outside that door. Uh, the reception, by the way, is hosted uh, uh, by the Administrative Office of the Courts uh, and the Gary C. Johnson Law Firm. We thank uh, uh, the Gary uh, C. Johnson Law Firm for its generosity and, of course, the Administrative Office of the Courts. Uh, there will be live music there. It will be provided by Bluegrass Ensemble, uh, led by our own Pikeville attorney, Shane Hall. So we do appreciate that. So at this time, uh, we, we do have some talent in our office as well as in the circuit clerk's office. I want to uh, call upon uh, 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 County Judge Executive Assistant uh, uh, T.J. Litifik, uh, who will sing uh, the beloved state song of Kentucky, and I'll ask that you stand for that. He's promised to do the traditional version and not the Happy Chandler version. <laughs> T.J. Litifik. The sun shines bright. In my old Kentucky home, tis summer, the people are gay. The corn tops ripe, and the meadows in the bloom, while the birds make music all the day. The young folks roll, on the little cabin floor, all merry, all happy and bright. By and by, hard times come a-knocking at the door. Then my old Kentucky home, good night. Weep no more, my lady, oh, weep no more today. We will sing one song for my old Kentucky home, for my old Kentucky home far away. Now I asked TJ to sing the uh, uh, traditional uh, version because I like to join in on the course and, and Justice Minton, uh, I know that uh, uh, I've been to many a football game and enjoyed that course very much, but I didn't enjoy the game in Nashville very much this year as your Western Kentucky Hilltoppers laid it on our cats, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you TJ, that was beautiful. Any, and. Uh, so that uh, pretty much concludes everything we have here except one very important thing, and that's uh, uh, my good friend and fellow attorney, uh, William J. Baird, who will pronounce uh, and deliver the benediction. I want to say that, uh, uh, that uh, it's been my privilege and honor as, as a practicing attorney here at this bar to have uh, 
uh, practice cases in all three of our uh, courthouses, uh, uh, the old courthouse as we now call it on Main Street, uh, 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 practice both uh, civil and criminal law there and, and uh, also in the Hall of Justice as it was formerly called, our former judicial center. And uh, I haven't practiced a case here, but I was honored, uh, Justice Minton, to sit on the very first uh, jury in Judge Eddie Coleman's uh, uh, court, a civil case. And so, so I span all three courthouses, but my friend uh, Bill Baird uh, reminded me that he and I uh, tried the very last case tried in the uh, old courthouse. Uh, I had forgotten that, Bill being younger than I remembered. At this time, uh, attorney, uh, Pikeville attorney, William J. Baird III will deliver the benediction. All right. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this very special day. We thank you for the gift of this wonderful facility. We pray your blessing on it in the years to come. We're thankful too, God, for the men and women who've come before us who have laid the foundation through their service uh, in public service and through judgeships uh, for what we have here today. For all the hard work, God, we're thankful. God, we ask your blessing now upon the judges who will sit here, not only presently, but those who are to come, that you will uh, anoint them with your wisdom Give them your guidance, and let them always temper their justice with mercy. And God, we pray for folks who will come here and serve as jurors. Will they always seek the truth? Will they always seek to do your will in each particular case, some very difficult? We pray for public servants, Lord, who will continue to serve the people of this, this commonwealth, and particularly this county. We pray your blessing upon them as they seek your guidance and wisdom. Let us uh, realize, God, that all source and wisdom comes from you. And God, we pray uh, your blessing upon this building. May it be one where all the employees are provided with good uh, working conditions and safety. We pray your sa uh, safe safety for this, this building as well. Now we pray that you'll go with us in the coming, uh, in the coming this day and in the coming days. Help us always seek to do your will and to give you glory and, and honor. And I pray all these things in the name of Jesus and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.